Good afternoon. Uh, let's continue our visual diagnosis. Ears. In the same way that the eyes are on aspect of the liver, but are influenced by many other organs in the body. The ears are an aspect of the kidneys. The kidneys, especially kidney gene, have a direct influence on the ears. But several other organs can also influence the ears via their channel connection. Each of the young channel, for example, uh, connects to the ear either via the main channel or via their internal and uh, sinew channel. The ears can be invaded by exogenous CG or disrupted by internally generated CG. The shape of the ears. The ears are created from uh, and nourished by kidney gene. The shape, size, and texture of the ear can Therefore, relay, relay information to us about person's constitution. A small ear can be a sign of a gene deficiency. If the ear appears shrunken, it can be a sign of gene, gene uh, deficiency or yin deficiency. If the ears are inflamed or swollen, this may well be a sign of damp heat or heat forcing body fluid up to the ears. Pain in the ears can be a sign of heat in the liver and gallbladder. Or an invasion of exogenous CG, it can also be a sign of an imbalance in the body or body part that corresponds to a specific area of the ear. Discharge from the ear. An increased uh, production of wax in the ear can be a sign of damp heat or damp or damp heat, in which case the increased exudation will be thick and sticky. More watery wax can uh, indicate spleen or kidney yang deficiency because yin yi is not being transported optimally and collects in the ears. Inflammation of the ear may arise when there is either an invasion of wind heat or damp heat in the liver and gallbladder. Damp heat in the liver and gallbladder can be both chronic and uh, acute in nature. Wind heat will always be acute. In both cases, the discharge will be yellowish and sticky. If the discharge from the ear is more watery and clear, it will be due to spleen chi deficiency, creating dampness, which has taken accumulated in the ear. Kidney yin deficiency can also manifest with a thin, watery secretion from the ear. As with other excretions, information about this will probably be gained by interviewing the client rather than direct observation because the client will probably have cleaned their ears due to this secretion. Okay, observation of the ears. Small ears, it signifies gene deficiency. Shrunken ears, gene deficiency or yin deficiency. Pain in the ear. Uh, it, is a, it signifies the liver and or gallbladder heat or in, an imbalance in the organ or part of the body that corresponds to the zone in the ear. Inflammation of the ear. It signifies invasion of wind heat, liver, or gallbladder damp heat. Yellowish sticky earwax. It signifies the phlegm and damp heat. The thin and watery earwax, it signifies the spleen chi deficiency. Okay, letter number one from a number, inspection of the ears. The kidney opens to the ears. All six young channels travel into or around the ears. They are a gathering place for the channels and, and collateral. 
through the channels and collaterals, the ear connect with the five distang, the six pu, and the entire body. Therefore, inspection of the ears not only helps one helps one to know the pathological change of the kidney and gallbladder, but the condition of the entire body. Number one, inspection of the ear shape. The normal ear shape should be of average size without dryness or scaling. Healthy ear are also free of sores, boils, or swelling. Ear shape and uh, indications. Uh, that is uh, pathological change of ear shape and their indication. Okay, ear shape. Small and thin ear. ear. Uh, this is an indication of insufficient congenital essence or kidney chi. Dry helix with scales. That is an indication of blood stasis. Stores, boils, or swelling, and redness on the helix. It is an indication of wind heat or liver and gallbladder fire. Okay, number two, inspection of ear discharge. The appearance of small amount of earwax is considered normal. However, the appearance of yellow or white pus or blood are considered pathological, are considered pathological. Okay, this is ear discharge and their indication. Uh, ear discharge, earwax, that is an indication of normal discharge. Yellow or white pus, that is kidney yin deficiency, fire with damp heat in the liver and gallbladder channel. In air discharge with blood, that is an indication of heat in the heat in blood. Okay, number three, inspection of ear color and sheen. The normal ear color and sheen should not favor any of the five colors or appear withered parts or burned. Okay, ear color and sheen and their indication. Withered and uh, parched helix. Okay, exhaustion of kidney chi. That is an indication of uh, exhaustion of kidney chi. That is uh, in ear color sheen, five colors. White, it is a sudden onset of wind cold or cold, green-black, excruciating pain. It's an indication of excruciating pain. Black, that is a kidney failure. Red, excess heat or damp heat. Red collateral on the back of the ear that feels cold to the practitioner touch. That is an indication of prodrome or measles. The yellow, it is an indication of damp heat accumulation in the kidney. The ears are related to the kidneys. In chapter 17 of the spiritual axis, kidney chi opens into the ears when the kidney are harmonized. The ears can detect the five sounds. Chapter 5 of the simple question says, the kidneys govern the ear. Chapter 37 of the spiritual axis says, the ears are the sense of organ of the kidneys. Although the relationship between the ears and the kidney is very strong, other organs also influence the ears. For example, the heart has an influence on physiological and pathological of the ear. In chapter 4 of the simple question says, the south corresponds to the color red and to the heart which opens into the ear. All young channels uh, reach or enter the ears, both lesser young channels, gallbladder and triple burner, have a strong influence on the ear also. The former circling around the ear and the latter entering the ear. These two channels are particularly involved in acute ear patholo pathologies characterized by either wind heat or damp heat affecting the ears. The small intestine channel interacts, uh, intersects with the gallbladder channels. 
in the region of ear and enters the ear at SI19 or small intestine 19. The bladder channel also intersects with the gallbladder channel in the region of the ear. The internal pathway of the stomach channel also reaches the ear, whereas the muscle channel of the large intestine travels onto the front of the ear. Okay, as you can see, uh, channels influencing uh, the ear. Okay, uh, gallbladder. Okay, the first is gallbladder main channel, uh, triple burner main channel, small intestine. Okay, bladder, stomach, and large intestine muscle channel. Okay, remember, the ear is influenced not only by the kidney channel. The normal ear should be, first of all, proportion, proportionate in size to the head. It should be relatively moist. Its flesh should be full but supple. And the helix should be pale red and moist. Although the ear may present uh, pathological signs like any other part of the face, the clinical significance of the observation of the ears is that they can give us an indication also of the constitution of the person. For example, large ears with the long earlobe indicates a good constitution of a person. Okay, thank you very much for your listening. Thank you for your time. Have a good day, everyone.